The 6.5 is on the road. We are at Mobile World Congress 2025 here in Barcelona. I think this is my 14th or 15th uh, MWC. It's great to be back. It's interesting, some of the themes that have been very consistent, obviously, is the power of connectivity uh, and networking. And even with this new, newish, newer AI overlay, um, the power of mobility, uh, and network edge computing and even edge connectivity is more important as ever. Yeah, it's become so ubiquitous in our lives that we've almost come to expect connectivity, but the work that has to be done to make sure that wherever we are, right. you know, whether we're in the air, whether we're, you know, on the ground in a factory, you know, in a container ship across the seas, the connectivity that is required has become pervasive, has become ubiquitous. But at the same time, the companies here at Mobile World every year, these are the companies that are really driving this future. And by the way, so much of what we're going to be able to do with AI depends on that connectivity being in place. Well, quite frankly, uh, AI at the edge hasn't even been addressed. I mean, I, mean I, I love some of my new AI smartphone features that I have, uh, but quite frankly, from a, from a commercial enterprise point of view, uh, that really makes the world go around here. We haven't even seen this. We're so just getting started. Yeah, so hey, let's dive in. Uh, Osa and Nicholas, great to have you both on the show. I know we had you separately on the 6.5, but anyways, great to have you on. Thank you, so nice of being here. Yeah. Fantastic to be here, and So let's start with that sort of broad macro topic. You know, you heard Patrick and I talking on the power of connectivity, but businesses are facing a major challenge. They're trying to transform uh, the enterprise is trying to transform. You know, what are some of the key business challenges, Nicholas, that you think that enterprises are facing that can be addressed uh, right now that you guys can help transform? You guys were early on spotting the relevance of AI interplaying with 5G. And I think it's uh, painfully obvious that businesses need to leverage agentic AI to radically improve operating efficiencies, transform customer experiences, but also really to accelerate business innovation. And if you look at business process re-engineering today, it's fundamentally been built on cloud. Storage compute, but has really failed to leverage high performance, programmable networks to connect business processes across an enterprise, devices, sensors, to really transform the business. And if you look at developers, they've been leveraging storage and compute to build applications, but connectivity to your point, right. hasn't really been available to them to leverage in an open, intuitive, and programmable way. But now, uh, as service providers are doing a better job, I would say, in exposing intelligent connectivity to developers on demand at scale, things are going to change. Yeah, and, and I think it comes down to very foundational I would say basic problems that companies always try to solve. They try to compete, they're trying to serve their customers. And I right. think with the progress we've seen in technology, but also innovation over the last couple of years, in a number of fields, we start to say they, want, they need to get more efficiency faster. At the same time, they need to do better decisions that are data-driven. And they need to be more responsive and serve the customers better. And if they don't, someone else will. So it becomes one of these it's not a luxury, it's actually a necessity uh, to survive. And it's really needed if you want to differentiate. Yeah, so Osa, um, Ericsson has a amazing history of organic innovations, a lot of investment, also acquisitions. Nicholas, hello. Um, but I, this is, very open, wide open question here. What are some of the ways you are addressing some of the newer needs of the enterprise? And I, I just say newer because if I look at what enterprises look at, I mean, the last 25 years, uh, the themes have been similar, but the way we deploy them and the rate at which they, they want them uh, has been changing. You know, I, I think it's really down to what Nicholas was into a bit earlier. It's about being able to connect the data and intelligence, right? right. And uh, I sometimes say, well, if you want to use AI or any type of analytics for real-time automated or better decision-making, data is gold, right? That's the gold mine. Uh, and for that, connectivity is king. And yeah. we haven't really leveraged. So most are actually still relying on a best effort connectivity. And best effort, I mean, either in performance, 
or in cost or in convenience. And convenience, if you think about it, there's still a lot of fix, which doesn't give you the flexibility. And now when we start to see progress on how you use video analytics or uh, you want to use, uh, you know, want to have that capability, regardless if you're on a ship, regardless if you are an AGV, regardless if you're indoor, outdoor, that's where I think we haven't really sold that from a pervasiveness perspective. And if I look then at the, where Ericsson consciously made investments is to address that pervasiveness, be it you know, in our cradle point solutions right. to connect things that are on the move or a branch, or if it's our private network, which may need now the form factor to support the needs today, but could over time be delivered through a slice. Or if we think about, I think, which is really the exciting next level of scale, when we can scale the capabilities of the network as easily consumable as a network, well, any API today. Uh, and that's what the journey we're on. So it's, it's quite simple in my way, view, because right. it's all about making it more accessible, more pervasive, and not be happy enough with all the cumbersomeness or non-performance of the best effort networks. Well, particularly when time to market is so, so important. And quite frankly, uh, this next generation of consumers and every consumer is a worker, I'm sorry, every worker is a consumer, they want speed, right? They just want to get things done quickly and faster, and yet we have not yet addressed these. Maybe we've addressed them in, inside the data center, but that's about it in, in this, this latest wave. Yeah, it almost feels like in some ways, the requirement going forward is going to be companies like Ericsson helping the, the customers see what they don't actually know is possible. Yes. You know, and, we kind of joke in the consumer, right? Because there's a lot of sort of iterative innovation that goes on and companies sort of, they say always listen to the customer and the customer will tell you and then they build the next thing. And then you look at some of the world's most successful companies though, I mean, that's kind of was always Step the- Step ahead. Yeah, it was the Apple thing, right? Is like they built the thing that we didn't know we needed yet. Like I didn't know I needed a pocket full of music just yet. I was pretty happy with my boom box. I, w I wanted a better speaker in a smaller boom box or a better Walkman. Point is, is like, you know, and I think the same thing is sort of, um, evident inside of the enterprise too is enterprise sometimes these people need yeah. you and they need Osa, you, Nicholas, you and your teams to come in and say, yeah. here's what's possible. And so that's something I know you're really focused on, Nicholas, is sort of helping customers see what could be. Yeah. Talk a little bit about sort of how you and Ericsson are thinking about building use cases that maybe customers don't realize are possible to sort of accelerate the adoption, because I'll, I'll say this, you guys sort of indicated it a little bit, but like, I feel like we've come here year after year, talked about like 5G and its potential. Yeah. And then this is like this sixth, seventh year in a row of talking, and, and in some ways it hasn't fully reached. Has this moment of AI plus cloud plus five, are we here? Is this what you're, the story you're starting to help people see? I think this is going to be the first Mobile World Congress where I'm not going to be on stage with service providers talking about all the fantastic 5G can do for you. Right. But I'm going to be on stage with enterprise customers talking about what 5G is doing to accelerate their transformation. So That's big. if that is any indication, I think we're getting there. Uh, the announcement of our joint venture, Aduna, creates the platform for operators to expose. My job now shifts to the Vonage part, which, which comes on top of the joint venture to engage developers, to your point. So where we're seeing interesting activities today, and it's no big secret because it builds on established go-to-market behaviors and products, is in the financial services sector, which already uses two-factor authentication. It's an existing API, it's an existing go-to-market motion, but it's prone to fraud. It's not a great customer experience. So the first couple of network APIs are really in the fraud and security space. So SIM swap and uh, number verify, silent authentication, location, or services which you will hear banks today talk about fundamentally enhancing security, which is a $50 billion problem for the industry and at the same time creating much better customer experience. So the authentication goes on in the background seamless, the network can match the subscriber with the device, the SIM card, and will authenticate you without you having to go through any right. manual interaction. So it's a hassle-free, secure transaction. So we're starting where you would always start any business uh, transformation, existing customers, existing products, and then you add on. But then you start looking at the more sophisticated network capabilities, precise location, quality on demand, and also then in the financial services sector. I was on stage with a 
CTO for the biggest bank in Latin America, and he was walking through some fascinating use cases, to your point, which I would never have thought about. So we just need to get these capabilities in the hands of developers. And he's thinking about, so Assault is a big deal in Brazil. So you can basically combine location with their application, and when you, you designate a secure location, when you're in that secure location, all of your capabilities will be available to you. Your savings accounts, your, your uh, I mean, all, all, everything. But when you're not in a secure location, those disappear and you will only have your, your cash account maybe available to you. So if you're assaulted, that's all you will be able to work with. So combining location with uh, the end user choice, quality of demand when you're at the point of sales, you're trying to do a right. cash transaction, it's instant. So as we start getting these capabilities into the hands of developers, they're already starting to innovate things that we hadn't thought about. And you'll see a lot on the floor here in, in different sectors. One of our favorites is um, first responders. Yes. So working with a very interesting Israeli company that has started again uh, with voice and video, which is available today. So uh, emergency call center gets a call from somebody that has been at an accident or is seeing an accident at the scene, will send the message, the, the, the victim can click on the link and establishes a high definition video link so the first responders can connect through the emergency center to see what, what the scene is like. The reducing emergency dispatch by 40%, so less ambulances traveling around, being able to provide first aid on site. Of course, here now you see quality of demand coming in, precise location, more and more network intelligence powering these type of high value use cases. So as we start engaging with enterprises, they are kind of starting to lead us to new places that we hadn't thought about. I really love, love the first thing you said that just shows progress of, okay, we were talking about you know, what could be and then uh, how to put some things together and now people are actually doing it. Uh, but there's a lot more people not being able to leverage um, the full capabilities of advanced networking and AI. Uh, enterprises, developers, and CSPs. There's progress, but, but a lot more to go. And maybe Osa, I'll start with you. What are some of the recommendations that you're making to those enterprises, developers, um, and CSPs to better take advantage of the advanced network capabilities and AI? I mean, I think like, and this may sound generic, but I think for any company been through any type of transformation, you need to be very clear on what is the problem you're trying to solve. You're not yes. using AI because AI for is fancy. AI. It, it comes back to, do I have a security problem? Right. Do I have a customer experience problem? Or do I have like JLR, Jaguar Land Rover is actually showing here and we'll share more about it in person later tomorrow. We had a problem connecting our pin shop. It's the biggest bottleneck. <laughs> it's the most, the area where we have most errors, a more dependent manual work, and it's not at all connected because right. of the situation of, of such a shop floor, just an, as an example. So I think it comes back to, if we demystify everything, it comes down to real business problems. I think there's also another aspect which you could say is a barrier and we, it's still to some extent a barrier but we're making progress. That's about enabling the ecosystem. And I think back to the previous question about, you know, we've been talking about this for many, many years. What's the difference? Well, we're making progress because we start to see more devices being enabled. More, and the next step is get more developer being, having access to these capabilities. Right. Then we start to rip down the barriers to actually be able to solve these problems in an easier way. And I think it was fascinating. I had a, one of these aha moments yesterday. I went to, um, uh, it was a kind of pre-dinner uh, mingle, and there was uh, some stations showing what are some of the real problems uh, that I solved today with network APIs and with high-performing connectivity. And it was a medical doctor talking about Singapore's uh, National Hospital University, how they are working with uh, doctor team in Ghana and it's a partnership between the two hospitals and he's assisting remote surgery. Right. And you remember where we talked about remote surgery like a big thing and I think that's been the key example, one of those hype examples. 
that had maybe too much space and people are, but is that really the value? Well, now we have a doctor. It's not the CSP, it's not the right. Ericsson. It's, it's right. a doctor saying, this is changing how me and my colleagues are treating patients, both in our own country, but also can provide specialist cares to other patients, boundless. And I think that's, that's exciting. So while we still have a lot to go, if we continue focus on those problems, and engaging the ecosystem, we will start to scale these capabilities. And that will be an even more exciting and longer journey than the last 10 years. Yeah, Nicholas, what about you? What recommendations do you have for those enterprises, developers, CSPs? You're, you're close to all of them, particularly right now, enabling, I mean, developers, the Vonage part coming in, having standard APIs and development practices so they wouldn't have to, have a different API for every single piece of equipment that, that they wanted to connect. That's the key, so I'm actually going to start with the CSPs, since all of them are here. Right. The message is, and that's why we created the venture with Aduna, is continue working on building the better programmable networks. Make sure you continue harmonizing on those APIs and how right. you expose them. Aduna will play a catalyst role in harmonizing APIs across networks. We need more of those capabilities exposed. Then on the Vonage side, we're engaging with developers and enterprise customers to experiment, to right. your point, to your point. We don't know what's going to fly, but we're going to share these examples with them. And then hopefully enterprises come to our developer portal, engage with us, say, I have this problem. Has anybody mm -hmm. figured out how to solve that? And God knows, you may be looking at a smart manufacturing problem, but then you see what we did in healthcare and say, I can use some of these capabilities to solve my problem. So it's really getting that experimentation going, which was a success of 4G. I mean, the app economy, I mean, we had no idea what was going to take off. Spotify, I mean, who would have thought about that? It was certainly not me. But when you get those capabilities exposed and you have developers coming to us with their problems, right. innovating, experimenting, we want to create the sandboxes for them to do that, is when the real magic is going to happen. I mean, what gives me a great courage is that we're at the point in time where there is a meaningful amount of network APIs available for developers to start experimenting. And we hear that from our partners, they say, this is awesome, I can totally see how we can turn that into great value-added services and solve our problems. Right. Now I just need global availability, which we're also working on, right? So between Vonage and Aduna, we should be able to get this flywheel going. Excellent. It really does feel like we sort of, we're arriving at this inflection though, you mentioned that 4G, we hit the app economy. That's where it really accelerated. And you started this conversation, Nicholas, talking about the agentic era. And in many ways, you know, we're hearing kind of agents, 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 but really how this manifests in technology, right, is we move away from this sort of self-driven interaction with devices to this completely new abstraction where things happen, yeah. right? And, you know, we'll get to the point maybe, Pat, where we think it and it happens, but, but where you know the sort of workflows are understood and they're being executed and it's not being driven by a bunch of point directive clicks, it's actually being done because it's got very ambient understanding, sensing, understanding, and then of course a, a series of driven activities through code and through developer programming. Uh, Nicholas Osa, this has been a fascinating, fas fascinating, and a fascinating conversation. <laughs> Sometimes you got to have a little levity here. Um, it's been a lot of fun sitting down with both of you. Uh, congratulations on the progress, on all the announcements here at MWC. I know Patrick and I look forward to continuing to follow For Ericsson's sure. journey, continuing to have conversations with the both of you. And it is the beginning of the show. Have a really wonderful rest of your MWC and we look forward to talking to you soon. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And thank you everybody out there for being part of this 6.5 on the road. We are here at MWC 2025 in beautiful Barcelona, Spain. Click subscribe, be part of all of our 6.5 on the road here. And of course, all of the 6.5 coverage everywhere, all the time. But for this one, for Patrick, for myself, time to say goodbye. We'll see you all later.